Hi, good evening everyone. Um, a bit of a special recorded this evening. I've got a special guest with me today, which I'm going to ask about various different things. You'll know this person well, uh, activist in many of the issues that concern us all. Um, so without further ado, let me bring him in. Danny Roscoe. Thanks, Danny, for joining us. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, listen, just before we started recording, I asked you about, and I said I was going to ask you about this again, some videos from James Goddard, and I hear other people as well, circulating about yourself. Yeah. Extremely, extremely unpleasant, to put it mildly. Tell us about this. You told me you've been getting these videos. Yeah, well, this was... This was... Yeah, it, it is. This was this happened yesterday. Now I'm uh, I'm doing what I'm doing in, in activism. You know, I'm yeah. trying to trying to put the right foot forward. So I'm I'm about everywhere. And yesterday I was at the Gurkhas supporting the Gurkhas um, up outside Whitehall. And all out throughout the day, I kept getting these little jive videos um, um, saying that I'm 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 fresh off the boat. Um, I'm this African. I'm never British. I'm never British, even though I was born here. I should go back to my right wing country of Africa or be a right-wing activist in, in Africa. And just silly things like this, but um, well, whilst he's, he, he's, he's saying all that, which is, you know, he, he, he's, he can say what, what, whatever he feels um, to say, it doesn't mean it's right or it's not going to hurt me in any type of way, but it's, it just shows a divide between the, the true right-wing and those impersonating. And, um, you know, like I always say, the people who follow me and the people who support me, uh, you know, the left like to call them the racists, them the far rights, but they forget about the the ones who are doing this to me and other well, people listen, of course listen danny sorry to ask you about this but i do think it's important that we that people know who these people are so let's get on to um other to issues you've been supporting the gorkas tell us a little bit about that well you know they, they've they've started on saturday the hunger uh, the hunger strike so it's, it's it's you know to death they put it out there that they're prepared to die there um and can they're on day five now and they're starting to get a bit of press there um it's only through social media though because we've all been sharing whatever but yesterday at four o'clock the the police came down to try to take their umbrellas and and blankets to keep them warm not to, to fall asleep because you're not allowed to fall asleep there um, and yesterday they came and took a gazebo so the the, the police are, are 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 taking all the stuff but not giving them what they what they deserve because all they want is an equality of the pensions you know so that's what that's all they're asking for for the last 30 years they've been doing this uh, i don't think it's that difficult but everyone seems to be like the the enforcement team of the police seem to be coming down and just not understanding and just just taking their stuff which is i, I think is uh, you know disgusting because they've served the country they've been in every single uh, war that we've been in there's 26 victoria crosses so they're not they're not silly um irrelevant fighters you know anyone who served them said they're, they're the fierce of the fierce and now they're at pension age, they just need a little bit more, not even a little bit more money. It's what the, the UK people, counterparts, what they're getting. They just want that same amount. Yeah. And so they're now, are they five days now without food and sleep? Yeah, five, five days now. Um, and that. there's a guy there, um, uh, I can't remember his name, I apologise, but he, he did it last time and he did 15 days and he's doing it again um, because Joanna Lumley, I think, stopped it last yeah. time. Um, so now they're doing it. They're doing it again. So he knows you can go 15 days. The government know this, but there's still no end in sight. And when you've got the the traditional values of the Gurkhas or the Nepalese, who who is is, is honour before anything, mm -hmm. when they say they're going to die, they they mean it. It's not a it's not a silly thing that they're saying. That's what they're going to do. And the issue is that they are given less of a pension than other serving other people who have served. Yeah. Basically, what, what it uh, basically what it is, um, one of the one of the spokespersons. I did an interview with him, and he basically told me that when they are outside of of Nepal, or no, when they're outside of, of Britain, so they're so they're outside on tour or whatever, they don't class that as serving. So for every four years that the normal soldier will get, they'll only get three. They'll only get three of them. And it's it's over the whole serving time. So we're talking about you know we're talking we're talking years and years and years. And and it's the amount of of years you do which says what pension you get. 
So because that one year has been knocked off, it means that they can never get the full amount of what the the, serving, uh, the the UK counterpart gets because they say they're not serving the same amount of time. And isn't it amazing that this country can find money for people who hate it, but never yeah. it seems for people who love it? <laughs> Exactly. This is this is what I said. These people, there's, there was forty thousand and uh, pen, uh, pensioners, um, and now there's fifteen thousand. So they think that they're they're waiting for them to die out. And I said over the over all this this debacle we've had for the last fifteen months, there's been a lot of money going into people's pockets for doing nothing, for sitting at home and doing the right thing. Um, they're getting paid for it. So that's that's billions and billions of pounds. Also, the economy's been uh, trashed. That's nuts. That's a few more billions. But for fifteen thousand people who has fought for your country, who love the country, and they don't really want to be here now because they're retired, and it, they could free up so much social housing, it could free up so much uh, pension credits, things like that. It could, it could free all that up if they just gave them the money, but they're happy to give the money, you know, to people that are coming, that are coming here, um, you know, from Dover, and they're happy to do all, all of that, all the hotels, all the quarantines, all of that, but for these people, they seem to forget. And it, it seems to me, and I'm not one to say, oh, it's, it's a colonial um, mindset. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't do that. But to me, it seems that the British government do not see the Nepalese government as an equal thing. I can't think of any other way they're doing it. Well, I mean, what a, what a way to protest. Five nights without sleep or food is incredible. They clearly mean it. Um, yeah, and they've got... Yeah, yeah sorry sorry and they've, they've got they've got these people these three people here but when these are done they've got another three people so this isn't going they've, they've got 90 days there they can stay there for 90 days so you know imagine how many people they will put put through if needed it, it's, it, it's it's yeah it's unhumane yeah no it is and and it's, it's particularly great in when you consider that they've served the country yeah, this is exactly. it's, it's such an yeah. insult. They put their lives on the line for the country, and this is how they're treated. But then, I mean, veterans are treated badly anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no different to the people, the veterans that are out in the street, the veterans yeah. who uh, you know are suffering with PTSD, the, the the veterans who just need they need something, you know, they need a little bit of help when they, when they come out. It's no difference to that, and it seems that the government's happy to to uh, train a uh, you know a, a trained killer, a fighter. The best of the best they're happy to train these people but after that when you've got to come back to a normal mind frame and a normal society they're not happy they don't want to they don't want to know well we'll definitely keep an eye on it and i'd encourage people to give them all support that we can so what else have you up to danny i know you were in um you were at speaker's corner last yeah. weekend how did yeah. that go it went it, it, it was a bit it's a bit weird it went, it went okay um i had a few a few people i had that that dusty guy who um when i tried to explain him that hatoon is legitimately she can speak about uh islam because she was in the fold the same as i do about black lives matter because i'm black i had dusty court say allegedly um to to, to me saying black so this is a, a left-wing activist you know trying to demean her me when i when i say something and i had a few you know there's a few um people around hatoon or, or whatnot but it, what, what was funny was none of the people who who i would have thought would want to come and speak to me i uh, would want to come and and have this debate they've said it online didn't come the ali dowers um you know the the other people and the people who were there they they kind of hid from me but then the week, last week we've got the nation of islam we've got these these weird um pro-palestinian people who who are quite extreme with masks and, and and all sorts we had all of the the dawa team there we had everyone but when i'm there and, and it's it's good to have these debates they just don't want to have it because unlike you Amory, when they were there and they were just calling you out and out racist because that's all they can really do um with me i have the same views as yourself and they can't say that to me because, you know, obviously I've got a darker skin and it's not a, an easy one. I have to try and uh, engage. But when they do engage, I can show all their, their, all their flaws and their faults in their ideology. So what do you think of the police down there? I mean, they, they, I, they, they, this guy got away, the guy who attacked her got away. And that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. The police have set out their stall, haven't they? You get this yeah. this impression that the she's to blame because if only she would shut up, then these things wouldn't happen to her. And that is the prevailing view, I think. I mean, what do you think of the police at Speaker's Corner and in general? 
Um, they, they're not fit for purpose, uh, but then they're, they're, they're not wanting to do anything about it. Now, they're happy to have all these reports coming out to say, oh, oh, I've never known an institution that's had so many bad reports about them, you know, and especially about the corruption. And and that's the important bit, because you know how big like the, the Muslim Council of Britain are or, or people like this. So the, if the Metropolitan Police are, are classed, not by me, by a report, classed as institutionally corrupt, and then they don't go after the people that me and you see and everyone else watching the stream will see as the perpetrators. You know, if you if you go to Speaker's Corner and you speak your truth, it's not a lie because she's down 30 different uh, versions of the crime. So she's speaking about that. That's not a lie. There's proof there. So she's speaking the truth. Um, she does it in a way that, that that maybe other people doesn't do, but that's her right. That's her freedom. So the police to come and say, well, you're the problem for, for speaking up and speaking out. We're going to remove you and we're going to ban you and we're going to do all sorts to you. But you've got 30 to 40 fighting age people hating you and you're a woman and we're not going to we're not going to do anything. If it was if it was a just society for the police to do their job, then obviously they would be trying to remove the people who are agitating it. And it's not hard. You might not be able to do it on the first day, but I'm sure this team's watching every single stream. Um, you could actually identify them for the following day and have pictures out and say, well, last week you did this, you can't go in there. But it's, it's like they don't want the backlash from the people like the Muslim Councils of, of, of Britain uh, and people like that to, to say that they are targeting um, Islam or whatnot, and, and it's not. It's, it's it's been such a big thing. Islam. If you speak out about it, you're attacking everyone instead of thinking about what we're actually speaking about, because it's it's only radical side of it. It's, it's the radical side of anything. I speak out about the radical side of, of the black community, the black supremacists, Black Lives Matter, the Marxists. I speak out about that, but it's the radical side. I'm not saying everyone in the black community is a wrong one, but that's what they want us to. That's what they want people to believe. Right, let's talk a little bit about Black Lives Matter then. What's, I mean, take us through it. What do you think of them? What do you think they're doing to race relations in this country? I don't think they're doing much favour for, many favours for race relations in this country. What's your view? Um, with the race relations in this country, they uh, bring it back way past where, where it was. People say 20 years, I say more 40 years, I say more from the beginning, from when Windrush actually uh, docked in Tilbury. Um, I think that's when it's bringing it back to. What they're trying to do is, is, is create this, this, this divide. At the moment, there is a, 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 a it's difficult for, for, for me to explain it in uh, really brief, but at the moment, there's this, this anti-white um, agenda going on. At the same time as a critical race, um, theory agenda going on at the same time. So the people at the top are using stupid, um, you know, easily influenced black people to fight against everyone who's white. And they're getting the tools by having unconscious bias, by having the critical race theory, by having everything is is not your fault. Everything is is somebody else's fault agenda. And these people are are are, are taking it. So once you once you've got this battle going on everything around you is kind of um, silence because a white person can't say anything about what they see about a Marxist takeover. They can't see about uh, about the lies that, that are being told. And also the black person, if they believe in it, they can say what they like or, or in, 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 in reply. Or they can just make things up like, you know, um, let's say now uh, Statue of Nelson, he, that, that's, to do with slavery and that needs to be taken down because you know all the stuff but Tate and Lyle they don't really go to Tate and Lyle who is a sugar importer from you know I, I believe is in Barbados or Jamaica or something like that so they're heavily involved in the slave trade but no they don't want to speak about that they're only speaking about specifics so it, it, it makes it seem like it's a targeted um, attack basically on British people to just to de destabilize it so they can bring in something else that everyone should adhere to and it's it's that that erosion that literally pulling down of history i mean this is a this is a communist thing isn't it to attack statues yeah. pull down statues rewrite history attack historical figures what it actually what it's doing is making black people non-british for a start it's making that divide as if black people aren't british aren't part of this country that's something that yeah. they are doing um but they're, 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 
it, like you said, they're they're, re, they're pushing something in something under the cover here. You say it's a Marxist society. Can you tell us what you mean by that? Well, basically, it, uh, what 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 I'm saying is they they want to make the make it a, uh, the classes, um, you know, higher. They want to make the bigger divide between the classes, and they also see see with, with me with the Marxist side of it. They want to divert funds towards specific places. Um, and, and that is, uh, I believe anyway, that is a common trait. If you look all in through Africa, uh, when you've got the socialist, the Marxist agendas there, they've been filtering off the money from the people. So, so once they've got this agenda of saying, OK, then right, everyone is poor. Right. We're going to we're going to make sure the universe basic income or whatever they, they're saying, everyone's got the same level. So then we can in install a class system. But what we're doing is we're not going to install a, a proper class system. We're going to do it on, on black people. So we're going to make them higher than the than, than white people in the UK. And they are going to take all the money. Exactly the same as what's going on in South Africa now. Exactly the same. That's the, that's the type of society I, I say that the Marxist agenda is, is doing. And can you explain that to me? Just for people listening, what, what's happening in South Africa now that you think is comparable? Well, basically... Well, basically, in South Africa, um, since the apartheid, and, and they um, they made everyone, you know, got rid of the got rid of the segregation, got rid of everyone's on an equal footing, and then you bring in a a communist um, black leaders, and everything starts changing because they start taking money off the white farmers, they start installing a segregation that we're seeing now, as in black only areas. Um, and, and things like that. So they're taking the money off of, off of that. They're giving then, saying that the, the black people, you deserve the land. So if you take the land of the white farmer, it's fine. We're not going to send you to jail or whatnot, and you can generate an income that way. Well, people are still getting money from, the government's still getting the money, and it's still going into their pockets. At the moment, you've got, um, is it Zuma? Is Zuma? Um, I, think, I think it's Zuma. He's, he's wanted from the authorities because of the corruption that he, he's doing. So whilst you're having all of this, going on the people at the top are just getting richer and richer and richer and getting more land and they're, they're writing more laws and whatnot while the, the people are fighting but it's not an equal fight because the white farmers and the, the white people have have not done anything wrong now even before if it's culturally if you've grown up in a segregated area and you've grown up that way and you've been told by your fa fathers and, and whatnot it's not your fault you've been you've been you know you've been bred that way i suppose but now the, these people are whipping, the black people are going around in huge, huge gangs, whipping uh, white people, making them uh, sit on the floor, take their cars, you know, robbing pregnant people. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, while all of that is happening, all the money that the country is making is just going into the, the, the government's hands and they're putting it into their own bank accounts. Yeah, it's um, it, it, I I agree with absolutely everything you're saying. I think that is what if we keep going in the way that we're going, that is the way, that is the direction that we're going in. Um, it will do because, so yeah. sorry, it will do because you you've got people and people are not seeing this. You've got people like the Nation of Islam. Okay, this is a black supremacy movement. Everybody knows this. They keep popping up and up and up but once they get enough support and once all the laws the people like diane abbott the the dawn butlers are, are are saying no they need more black people to do this oh they won't look at the nation of islam as what they are you know a black supremacy so then if they were to put them in a position of power either socially or in the government level then you would see what they would do and it would grow from there because black people would be like okay then cool i'm either going to get segregated myself for not standing for standing against these or i can join them so what are people going to do they're easily led it's easier to go and join these people and all of a sudden you've got these big big organizations of black supremacy people willing to do this this ideology of okay then you will put money into me and i'll, I'll take it and i'll pretend that i'm with the people ready to do that knowing all the laws are going to be towards you and and what you want to do um you know, and it's easily done. And then once you come to a, an election and you have these people coming and voting and, you know, you need, what do you need, 20% of people who have never voted in their life to vote again to change the whole thing? They all vote for these things like taking the initiative party and then it, it's game over. It is literally game over. What kind of support does Black Lives Matter have among the black community in Britain, Danny? I, from the people I see, there's a lot more people who are against it, okay? But that's Black Lives Matter, who are a, 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 a radical group, 
But then you've got the black reformists, okay, which a lot a lot of people know. So if you if you just Google the black reformists, they're, they're based in Brixton. They're the ones who want to change the laws. They're the ones who who think that it's an unjust society, but they're doing it through a a, a, polit a, a political way, and they have a lot of support. But yeah, if they went if they got backed by the media more than what they are now then that's where the problem would begin because they want to reform everything and it's still the same it's still a supremacy party because they want to reform everything not on an equal footing they want to reform it all as in the statues that will come down statues will go up of, of of black people who haven't really done a lot but they say yeah they deserve a whole heap of statues um so so they're the ones i, I believe have got the the biggest support and they're the ones that we need to be looking at it's worrying, isn't it? Because I can tell you one of the messages that this Black Lives Matter and beyond, one of the messages, and it refers also to tearing down statues and, and rewriting history, it's telling the white majority that actually perhaps we can't live together as equal yeah. British people. It's not our fault. It's and This is what a lot of white people will think. It's not us. It's actually... I'll get that that's rejecting us and they are an actual threat to this country and we can't live peacefully together that's the message that's being sent and it's very dangerous and if you know if the white majority is so evil then surely there's that should be taken you know that surely someone needs to worry about a backlash coming from from white people do you think there is any concern about a backlash from whites a hundred percent and I, I said uh, for a lot of people speaking to me about this at the moment um yeah. saying well uh you know danny uh, i've never been racist but yeah. you know what's going on can you tell me what's going on and the biggest thing is is a, a black culture because when you live in these communities and you speak out about uh, about uh, black lives matter about anything and say no you know what you're you're talking rubbish which a lot of people who do come and, and mail me are, are in support um who are black when they speak out they get shunned by the community and you know it's a very violent community let's not get it wrong black on black crime operation trojan is not there for no reason okay we see it every single day so if you speak out in a black community you live in the black community you are going to be targeted and you're probably going to get death all right so this is why not a lot of people speak out so when the supremacists all speak out um the black supremacists they speak out because they've got units they've got numbers they control the communities all right i say to them okay then cool if you if it's so bad if black lives matter want to do anything you go to the drug dealer's house and you expose them you tell them don't sell drugs in this community the people are bringing in knives guns you expose them but they don't they just want to go on about reparations and this changes and take down this statue i do more speaking out against them than they uh black lives for black lives than they do themselves um but the fact of the matter is people are saying well you know this is what i'm seeing i'm only seeing radical black people on tv on the media everywhere i'm not allowed on the media this is why i come on on, on, to, on to these shows because you know we're the ones that are pushing the real truth out i can't go on the mainstream media because i don't have the right narrative but this is the problem. If you're only seeing black people being divisive, being aggressive, being all sorts of, of wrong, which which a lot of them are not. If you only see that, it's going to turn you to your own. And there's all studies saying that if you put 20 white people and 20 black people all in a room and you left them there, by nature, they would all go to their own their own uh, ethnic groups. And that's what we're going to see. And that's a problem. This is a problem for me because when people see me walk down the street and they don't know Danny Bosco, what are they going to think? What do you think of the media? The, the media are facilitating this at a, a rate of, of knots. They're complicit with this. You know, the media, the government, the big tech have all got together and they've all said, right, this is what's going, this is what's going to go on. I do believe it, it, China is pushing this. I do believe they want to create a, the, the economy uh, balance back to the east rather than the west and it makes it it makes sense because if you look at china's uh the the bri the uh, the belt and road initiative um they said that they they need this they need the economy to go back to the east and then they say the reason we can do this is by destabilizing other countries and this is what they do and they do it effectively so black lives matter i do believe comes from that way of thinking um so i've forgotten the question now what do you think of the media 
Oh yeah, the media. So yes, yeah, sorry. So it's coming from that direction. So the media will know. Hang on a minute. It's a power play at play. So we facilitate it, or should, should we stand up against it? And nobody stands up against China. So what they are doing is saying, okay, then cool. We will we will just spit out all of this this bad rhetoric. How how white people are so bad and black people are so oppressed, and we'll just keep spinning out. And the, the moment people speak out about it. We will go with everyone else. I've not given them a platform or we will say that these people are a danger to society because, you know, they want to be with the status quo. And the media is unashamedly pro-China, unashamedly pro-left wing, just and, and it's, it's causing to me. I mean, I loathe the mainstream. I absolutely loathe it. I think it's evil, rotten to the core. I really do. You are, they are stirring up unbelievable uh, uh, division and conflict for the future deliberately and knowingly stirring it up and you saw it during coronavirus they absolutely washed all blame away from china and seemed to focus on donald trump and, and america it, it, is always in the wrong the west is always in the wrong the media is a huge huge part of this problem but if you know if you know it's the people that did the attack it's the people who could in that change you know, you look at you look in, in here, yourself and for Britain, I, I, I believe, you know, it, it needs to be a big push on that. Because, um, as I said, if, if, if you can get people who haven't voted before, then you can change the balance. Um, uh, Tommy, um, you, you know, Nigel Farage, even people like Neil Hamilton, and, and that, they attack all these people at, the, at their times because they are enacting a decent change. And they know that if people do believe and do get the 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 vibe of what they're saying okay because a lot of times you can say something and then people it takes a while for them to understand it and then by then um they've listened to the mainstream and you know the point's not valid anymore because they've been brainwashed so because they know that they need to keep moving their little click and this is it it's a click it's a it's an elitist click we go to football it's been stolen by the, uh, from the working man by the elites. Okay, yeah. if we look at it now, that all the taking the taking the knee or whatever, that was the working man. That was a working man's thing. If you change the football, you can change a lot of the working man. Um, you look at the government; they're all elitists. They're all going to be from Eton and whatnot. There's very few working class men, women, or you, you know whoever in these ranks. And this is what they're doing. They're sticking together for the whole of their lifetime. So for twenty years, they're all saying, "Yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm a newspaper editor. I will push." Bobby pro Boris, and then everyone starts doing that, um, and, and Boris then changes from what he says to this kind of socialist um, lifestyle that he seems to have, this socialist liberal um, mind for going on. Because now COVID's done, they're all on about uh, climate, but one 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 emergency to another, and this is what it is. If we live in fear for long enough, we'll just follow what they do because we believe they'll keep us safe. In fact, they're the enemy. They're the ones who are attacking us and our communities. And we need to just, we need to make a change. 100% agree. Well said. Um, right, last question, Dan. I'll let you go. I can see you're in line. <laughs> you're <most> clearly busy. Moving <laughs> around the place. Always, what always. To, what are you up to um, next? Anything you want to tell listeners about? Any events, any rallies, anything that you're going um, up to? Well, well, football's coming on, and uh, as everyone or people may or may not know, I, I've got a banner that I take outside of football because uh, my, my campaign, anti-football campaign, is you can't tackle racism on your knees. And this is the, the factor of the matter is Black Lives Matter taking a knee in the football stadiums is to tackle racism, and it's just it's ridiculous. So I've got an All Lives Matter banner, uh, Keep Politics Out of Sport. It's got on there, Black and White United, which is, you know, what, what, what I'm about. And I've, I went through uh, every England game in the Euros. So now they're doing it for the next season. What I'm focusing on is trying to get up and down the country to as many football clubs and getting the pictures, getting the interviews of the working class, real working class, not not the elites who who who, who want to do what they do to get into the football club, the working class men and women of the, of the community. Um, so that's really what I'm I'm doing. Of course, I'm, I float about everywhere. I try and get as much as I can because I feel it's important that if I get the like the immigration, the Gurkhas. If I can get that out myself as well, it leaves less people to say that's a racist thing. That's a you know that's a far right ideology about the the, the immigrants from Dover because you know 470 people a day coming in through Dover and the beaches. Um, I don't think that's a right wing ideology. I, that's the truth, and that's something that we need to get on board with. But if I can do it 
and I can uh, pull it out there and, and a few people will, will share it, then I think it's a good job done. Um, so I, 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 I'm doing a lot of that, but focusing on football, because as I said earlier on in the, in the interview, once they get the, 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 the football people, the working class who watch football, once they get them on board with their ideologies, with their you know, pro-Black Lives Matter stance, then that's a problem. Um, like the European Super League, you see how Boris Johnson changed his tune as soon as you know thousands upon thousands went outside their clubs to say we we don't want this European Super League. He did it on a press conference, so that's how important um, the propaganda is in the football um, arena, I suppose. Yeah, with, with um, so that's what I'm focusing on most. Brilliant. So, listen, Danny, thanks ever so much for taking the time to come on. Will you come on again? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Let us know what you're up to in the next few weeks and how it all goes. But yeah, thanks, I mean, thanks for everything you do. Really interesting talking to you. And uh, I'll probably catch up with you. I, I'll be in uh, London on the 28th at the anti-lockdown protest, if you're there. Are you going down there, yeah? I'll, yeah, I'll be there. Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll be there as well. Then. Yeah, All right, so we'll meet up then. All right, yeah, thanks definitely. very much, Danny. Take care. Thank you. Yourself. Cheers, right, Emily. Have a good one. Bye-bye. 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 Fantastic um, to talk to Danny. Um, really grateful to him for coming on. We're going to try and get him. We'll get him on again. We'll get some more people, some more activists on so you can hear from them and, and hear what they are up to and hopefully give them your support. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you agree with what you hear on Four Britain videos, remember to like them, share them, and subscribe to our channel. And why not follow us on social media as well? The relevant links are below. Thank you.